Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Buildings are responsible for 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions, and 80 percent of the buildings that will still be here in 2050 are already built inefficiently. The Netherlands has embraced this massive challenge and have set out to retrofit 110,000 homes to net zero. They call it Energy Sprung. Edmonton Net Zero builder Peter Amarongan was quite taken with the idea, so he's doing the first large-scale Energy Sprung project in Canada. And we're here at the Sundance Housing Co-op where we're doing a deep energy retrofit to the entire 59-unit uh, complex. They were built in um, the 1970s, and um, we're now getting them ready for uh, a carbon-constrained, near-zero carbon future. Probably the thing that's unique about it is that it's the first large-scale adaptation of the energy sprung system, the Dutch energy sprung system in North America. In the Netherlands, their goal is to renovate all buildings to net zero by 2050. Their initial goal is 110,000 deep energy retrofits, and 10,000 have already been completed. They have hundreds of thousands of post-war townhouses uh, that were built with very little insulation, um, and um, they've come up with a scheme where they do a, a digital scan of these buildings with LIDAR or photogrammetry, take that back to the office, uh, use it to design panels that are built in a factory, and then these panels come out of the factory with uh, siding, windows, insulation, and wrap the building in a whole new parka, basically. And uh, in a matter of, of really a month or so, they can take a group of townhouses and, and turn it into a net zero building. The process is called panelization. Factory-built walls and roofs are dropped onto a building with a crane, creating a super-insulated blanket around the home in a few short weeks. The Sundance Housing Cooperative in Edmonton consists of townhomes that were built in the 1970s above code, but pretty leaky, with about four or five air exchanges per hour. Peter hopes to reduce this to well under one. The process begins at the very foundation of the homes. So the insulation goes all the way down to the footing, like right, the, the entire basement wall is getting insulated with about five inches of um, low carbon uh, graf uh, graphite infused uh, uh, styrofoam insulation. It's about R25. The new walls cover the old walls and bring the insulation value up to an amazing R42, fully three times better than before. So this is, this is not the original wall of the building. This is about eight inches out from the original wall of the building. And uh, between this and the original siding, which is still on, is eight inches of cellulose insulation. So now we've got, instead of an a R15 wall effective, we've got about an R42 wall, and it's also airtight. This membrane is sealed together. It's got a sticky layer. It's self sticky. We these buildings when we tested them before we started leaked at a rate of about four or five air changes per hour uh, under the test. Now they're down to about 0.6, pretty close to passive house levels. That wall is eight inches thick, filled with cellulose with very very little framing in between, just minimal, just enough to hold it in place. The next weakest link, like the next single biggest component of heat loss. Uh, is probably the windows. So we've we've taken the old uh, double glazed windows and replaced them with um, kind of state of the art uh, triple glazed windows with fiberglass frames. R8 center of glass, R5 frames. These buildings are so efficient they will require 70 percent less energy to heat. The old gas furnaces were removed and they're being replaced with air source heat pumps. These are pretty amazing. These are air source heat pumps. They are replacing the furnaces and they, they produce about two units of heat for every unit of electricity where your gas furnace used to produce about 
0.95 units of heat for every unit of gas that went through them. So they're very efficient over the, over the heating season. Uh, they also produce very efficient cooling in the summer when it's super hot, as it seems to be getting these days. They're, in the summer, they have a reversing valve and they will cool. And, they, and they're very, very efficient cooling. They, they will produce about um, uh, three or four units of cool for every unit of electricity that goes in there. So they're very efficient air conditioners. Last summer, when, when we had that horrible heat wave, several of them, um, folks were so comfortable and, and really not using all that much energy to stay that comfortable. Temperatures in this northern city now reach near 40 degrees Celsius in summer. Heat pumps run on electricity, not gas, which means no gas bill and that the homes can be powered with renewable energy. We're putting solar on all of these. The solar, because of the east-west orientation, will, will only produce about 75% of the total annual energy needs, but the other 25% will come from uh, renewable sources like renewable purchased electricity, wind and solar. It's a big job transforming a home to net zero energy, but as Peter says, there's a business case for these deep energy retrofits. There are four components to the to the business case. Number one is the the energy savings, and those will grow as as carbon taxes grow, and they are going to. Um, there's fixing the maintenance backlog and paying uh, re reduced maintenance going forward. Uh, there's improved comfort and um, uh, improved resale value. That's number three. And, and number four is that there are incentives to help do this. The business case is dramatically improved if there's a maintenance backlog. Replacing siding is expensive, but if you combine it with adding insulation and better air sealing, there's an energy payback. Since the energy efficiency of nearly all buildings needs to be improved dramatically by 2050, Peter says we must be very careful to avoid half measures. So this, this building here, um, is kind of my poster child for don't do incremental upgrades. They, uh, the, the building was looking terrible, the siding was in horrible shape, and they replaced the siding with, as it turns out, exactly the same color, hardy siding, but only added about the three eighths of an inch of insulation and, and didn't do anything about air tightness or anything else. And so we basically wasted the value of that upgrade. If buildings are 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions, then dramatically reducing emissions is a pretty big job. We're at the very beginning. We have about 14 million dwellings in Canada and uh, 8 million of those are single family houses. We need to do about one every two seconds to be done by 2030. So we got a long ways to go. As hard as this will be to do, homeowners will have much better homes, much lower energy costs, and these homes are climate resilient, better suited to climate change impacts already in play, such as hot summers that we saw in 2020. Peter says projects like this one are helping builders learn how to do deep energy retrofits efficiently and more cost effectively. Many believe financing is key. If homeowners could get property assessed clean energy financing, known as PACE, the improvements can be made with no money out of pocket, making it a no-brainer. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel to see many more stories like this. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.